This was a young patient who'd come in with some pelvic pain, and a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis is obtained. And we can see that, um, we'll scroll all the way down to the pelvis, where we're just basically seeing a lot of inflammatory change. Um, a lot of fluid, a lot of fat stranding. Uh, you can see the uterus over here, and really posterior to the uterus, there's this thick rim, somewhat tubular structure, and uh, it wasn't sure whether this was arising from the adnexa. It wasn't sure if this was a bowel loop. There was a thought that this could be enterocolitis, and so an ultrasound was obtained. The patient could not tolerate the ultrasound, and therefore an MR was obtained for further evaluation. We can see on the MR images, these are the T2-weighted images with the fats at the right ovaries over here, the left ovaries over here, and uh, sort of interposed between the two and posterior to the uterus is this really thick rim tubular structure. There's some fluid in it. There's some layering debris within this as well. Lots of inflammatory change associated with this. Um, we can see on our diffusion-weighted images, this is the highest B-value images that we have. As we get to the B800 values, there is uh, restricted diffusion associated with this. And so, you know, this structure is quite separate from the loops of bowel, uh, a little bit easier to see on the uh, MR than on the CT scan, and is compatible with a dilated and infected fallopian tube. So this is a pyosalpinx. Um, there was some concern that could this be the appendix, but we were able to find the appendix in this case that was separate from it right around there. It looks a little thick wall, a little fluid filled as well, probably reactive to the inflammatory change. But overall, this is likely a pyosalpinx uh, in this patient who presented with pelvic pain.